So in the midst of everything, amidst the whole fight that happened last weekend, amidst the whole Chris Eubank Jr., Frank Warren, Eddie Hearn, Kelly Sowerland, we have to remember, we, we almost have forgotten almost, that in my opinion, arguably the best fight of the year, and I think it will be, I, I just don't see how this fight won't deliver, is happening on October the 12th. And it will be shown live on The Zone, just so you know. Have a look there on screen, live on The Zone pay-per-view. Link will be provided in the description below. You can use the G-Man link. It will actually help me out big time. And you can also avail of the seven day free trial with The Zone while you're there. Just so you know, I even have a couple of videos up on The Zone as well if you wanna go and have a look at them. They are all there. But Bivol Baturbiev, now, I want to say about a year, but basically before Turkey al Ashik got involved in boxing, I was kind of up in the air whether we'd even see Fury Usyk, and I was resigning him, and you can go back and look at the videos, I said it at the time, I'm like, I'm resigning myself to the fact that we are never going to get this fight. There was obviously those issues, well, the WBC made it an issue, where they refused to sanction fighters from Russia, basically, even though Baturbiev and Bivol are both Russian. Baturbiev, I believe, fights under a Canadian license, so that's A-OK, -okay, but Bivol doesn't, so they were like, ain't gonna happen. And I was thinking, well, that's stupid, for one. I mean, we don't know what Bivol's stance is on it, so why are you punishing him for something that he may very well be against? So I thought that was absolutely stupid, and Sullivan didn't seem to let up, but he eventually did, eventually i mean the turkeys or the turkeys the saudis involvement definitely helped but it meant then that this fight was more believable that it might actually happen and albeit it was meant to take place in june of this year it was meant to headline the match from queensbury show and just as i said just imagine i mean that card itself was very very good it was a brilliant card imagine if that was the main event i mean you had wilder versus zhang main event which i had no problem with that's a main event level fight ever i seen one for a pay-per-view but goddamn, i mean that would have been the co-main would have been epic and both guys listen both guys i was gonna say are on a good run of form but they've been on a good run of form since their pro debuts really i mean neither guy you've ever looked at and thought they're in danger of losing even Dimitri Bivol against Canelo. The only danger you felt in that fight was would the judges at ringside actually give it to him and try as best they did to give it to Canelo, they didn't. I mean, I remember one judge in that Canelo fight, I think he scored the first four rounds to Canelo or something crazy like that. And you're looking and you're like, it's not possible to actually score the first couple of rounds of that fight to Canelo. You, you physically cannot do it. And Canelo, if he'd been a little bit busier, they probably would have gave it to him, which would have been an absolute travesty. Both guys are on a good run of form. Bivol is looking particularly good. But Terbiev, for every fight, like he only he's kind of come down to fighting once a year. Some would say that's due to injury. Some would say it's due to other factors. I don't really want to get into that. I don't really know. But whenever we do see him, he looks devastating. Against Marcus Brown, he looked particularly devastating, even though we started that fight a little bit rocky. You know, Marcus Brown's stamina, his speed, everything, and athleticism, that was kind of bothering Baturbia, but you saw what happened. I mean, he just wore him down and broke him down. Against Anthony Yard, bit of the same, you know, the speed, the athleticism, the youth, everything of Anthony Yard. It took him a little bit of a time to acclimatize to it. But what he did there was just every time Yard had success, it just seemed like Baturbiev just made sure right, you're having success. I'm not even going to let you have that. I'm just going to go tenfolds on you. And that just sapped it out of him. And then against Callum Smith, I mean, that wasn't even... I mean, you could tell what was going to happen in that fight in the first 10 seconds. He'd Smith straight away on the ropes. I mean, that was just the right one on the wall in that fight. Bivol has not looked as... I don't want to say it in a derogatory way. He's not looked that spectacular in a sense of his wins haven't been devastating, you know, devastating, big knockouts, destroying guys, breaking them down. They've not been like that. They've just been Dimitri Bivol going in there and just completely outboxing his opponents, taking good fighters like Zerto. And I actually thought that fight would be more competitive on paper, it seemed, than the Canelo fight because of Zerto's size, everything. I thought that that might actually be a more competitive fight than Canelo. It wasn't. Bivol has looked phenomenally good over the last couple of years. I know there's, I'm not gonna go into them, but there is some issues, we'll say, outside of the ring with his now ex. 
that may affect him, may not. I suspect that Bivol is the sort of guy where once he's in the zone, that will be just him in the zone. But I just honestly, like this fight on paper, I I, I do think that we're getting Baturbi at well, definitely not getting him at his athletic peak, certainly not. But I hope that the injuries have not taken as much of a toll on him that we are seeing a diminished Baturbi. If I truly hope we're not seeing that. I don't think we will. I was worried when they said it was an a it was an ACL injury or something to do with his knee. I was a bit worried that they might push this fight back a long time. They haven't. And I was thinking the longer they leave it, the old Baturbi is going to get the Moyes out of the ring. And Bivol, he didn't wait around. He still fought on that match on Queensbury show. Forget the guy's name who he fought. I think he was um I think he might have been unbeaten. Yeah, it was Malik Zanad. Yeah, he was unbeaten at the time. That was the first stoppage win that Bivol had in many years. I mean, the last stoppage win was Sullivan Barrera in 2018. And even then, that was in the like, the 12th round with a minute and 20 to go in the 12th round. So very late. That fight against Zanad, yeah, Bivol was in control. But there were some moments there you looked and thought, okay, Zanad, he's... He's doing things in there. He, one of the judges gave him a round, which many fighters struggle to even get that against Dimitri Bivol. I think this fight is going to be absolutely flipping phenomenal. And when I look at the cards, we've lost Shakur Stevenson versus Joe Cordina. And on box rec anyway, they don't even have a fight listed for Joe Cordina. So it looks like they've got rid of that because you figure with roughly a fortnight to go before fight night come tomorrow anyway they would have someone penciled in they don't have anything so i would imagine that this is the card we're getting apparently shakur stevenson was going to head was sorry co-main event but i think he was going to headline the free portion of the card on espn and the pay-per-view was going to be if you got the major bivol art of shakur is now off it i think that they should do the right thing and they should make Fabio Wadley, Fraser Clark the co-main event because it deserves that. I know you have Jay Apataya, and the way they have it listed on Box Rec, oh, they've had they actually. Oh no, they haven't. I was gonna say I thought they added it, but they hadn't actually. The way they have it listed on Box Rec is they have Jay Apataya versus Jack Massey as co-main, which is obviously a world title fight. But I think that there's going to be more demand on Wadley Clark too. I think there's going to be more demand on that fight, and the general audience, the casuals, are going to be more invested in that than they will against Apataya. Apataya has been feasting on British fighters. You know, he's gone through, what's the guy's name? I have to go on box track now. I've already forgotten about him. Something Thompson, was it Craig Thompson or something like that? I forget the guy's name, what was his name? It was uh, Jordan Thompson. El Azaro, I mean, like he was feasting on those guys. They are very much below a Jack Massey. Jack Massey is levels above them. So that will be, probably a little bit more competitive no well it should definitely be more competitive but Apataya is, is something else he really is it shows how good Myris Bredis is that he can run Apataya very close in the rematch in what was Myris Bredis's last fight so it really does show how good one how good Myris Bredis is and the gap between the guys he's been fighting so it's a really big gap but I think Apataya will look good Clark versus Wadley is just going to be round 13 I think that's the type of fight we're going to get Eubank Saramet, meh, you know, meh. Whitaker versus Cameron, again, and Nicholson versus Chapman, again, like, I've seen a little bit of Raven Chapman, I've actually interviewed Raven Chapman just before she turned pro, she's very, very cool, she's a good girl, I haven't sat through a Nicholson fight yet, don't really know what she looks like in terms of fighting, um, I've heard people say that effective, but very dull, very boring, you know we'll wait and see how that fight that fight on paper could turn out to be could turn out to be a barn burner but yeah look let's wait and see in terms of the card i think the card is absolutely fine the main event and i've always said this about Paterbi at bibble you could give me a fairly run-of-the-mill obscure type card if you had that on as the main event i don't really care and i've said that i've said that throughout countless videos and i reiterate that this is not a bad card is it a as good a card as we've seen on some of the Saudi shows? No, it's not. Would it be as good as the card we seen last weekend, Joshua versus Dubois? I would say this has this is better. I would generally say this is altogether better. Now, the main event, both main events are very very good, but I would say this card, particularly right here, for me, is altogether better. It has at least one extra. It has, well, Nicholson Chapman could very well be a 50-50 fight. Certainly, Wadley Clark. I mean, it was a draw last time. So that is definitely 50-50. I think both guys can improve. That's going to be a great fight. So I think this card is altogether better. 
and yeah we've got a great main event so I don't want to give my pick just yet because to be honest with you at this minute in time of recording I genuinely am up in the air as to who I think will win with Joshua Dubois you know when I hold my hands up I was making it pretty obvious from the get-go who I thought was going to win the fight with this one it's like I don't know I, I genuinely look and think who who will win I'll do some more videos on this the closer we get a little bit of key strengths key points about guys but um until then man it's gonna be it's gonna be fun looking into their fights and, and going over strengths and weaknesses but let me know your thoughts on everything you excited about Bivol Baturbiev the undercard what do you think of that leave it all in the comments below as for now lads and lassies I'll leave it there hit the like button on the way in or on the way out peace